Alright, yeah, the Lord shedding like that. Yeah, it's everywhere, sir. It's everywhere. <laughs> Let's hope it it could be resolved soon, soon, sir. Mm. Uh, sir. Oh, alright, alright, yes, sir. Can I start or is just uh, one minute early? Uh, you can you can start uh, in exactly thirty seconds, sir. Okay. I must see. Uh, morning. Hey, it's everywhere, sir. I'm also uh, somewhere uh, southern, southern south side of Japan. It's very cold and it's raining. Oh, oh, yes, yes. No, right, all right, all right, man. Okay. All right. Let me. I greet all the honorable members and members of the staff. Let me take this Recording opportunity. Recording in progress. Let me. Chair, chair your mic is mute. I was kicked yeah. out, must call. <laughs> okay, okay, sir. You can go to your chair. So I have, I have rejoined. The system kicked me out. Let me, let me take this opportunity to welcome everybody to this portfolio committee meeting of today. Can I check with the secretariat if we have any apologies for today? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning to honorable members and uh, our delegation uh, from the department and from other viewers. Uh, we, we, we don't have any apologies from the committee chair, except to say we've got an apology from the ministry, uh, Minister Ch Chaveni, and also have an apology from uh, Advocate Susan from Public Service Commission chair. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Yeah, we will note those two apologies. Honorable members, on the 26th of February, the speaker introduced and referred to the ACT, a private member's bill uh, regarding the ease of doing business to the portfolio committee for the process. The bill will be introduced to this meeting today by Mr. Kruger. Therefore, today's meeting is to afford an opportunity for the for honorable members uh, to present the bill to the committee. Thereafter, the committee will make a determination on the desirability of the bill at a later stage. Having received and read the bill, we further extend an invitation to the presidency office since there is a branch that deal with social economic impact assessment to come and make an input on the bill in order to provide guidance where it's necessary. Lastly, the Public Service Commission will present an overview report on the financial misconduct in the public service for 2019-2020 financial year. Having said that, allow me therefore to welcome Mr. Kruger once again and allow him to, to present the bill to be followed by the presidency and then the public service com uh, commission presentation will be the last. Thank you very much, honorable members. Can I invite Mr. Kruger therefore? Honorable Chair, sorry Chair, I'm sorry to do this. Uh, I, I thought you were going to give us the chance. I want to present the Apology of Honorable Lisoma. She's only flying today from home to Cape Town. So she will okay. be a little bit late for the meeting today. Okay. okay. That will be noted, uh, Honorable Kibi. 
Is there any any other apology that? Uh... Mm, this is the MC where uh, even Minister Kumbuzo, the acting minister and the president, she she's also flying. She has indicated that she'll join us later. It's fine. It's fine, Comrade DM. Mm. Thank you. Any any other any other apology? Chairperson, uh, it's Honourable Schreiber here. Good morning. Um, Good morning. I just have a question on the agenda, a procedural matter, Chair. Uh, I see that we are dealing with the motion of desirability for this uh, particular bill straight after the presentation. Now, I just need to confirm procedurally whether this isn't something that first needs to go to the caucuses of our various parties once we've received this presentation so that we can actually get a mandate on whether we want uh, to proceed with this motion of desirability. So I'd like to request uh, you to consider that, Chair, um, to just postpone that decision to the next meeting so that we just have an opportunity to ventilate these issues and take it to our respective caucuses. Uh, I don't think it will take a long time out of our next meeting, but that might be just to cover us in terms of procedure. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Saiba. We were going to do exactly as you are requesting. Great. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. In that uh, item motion of uh, desirability, we were not going to delve into it. We were going to suggest this uh, uh, motion that you have put forward now. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I support that, obviously. Thanks. Thank you very much. Can I invite Mr. Kruger, therefore? Yes, um, thank you, Chair, and, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to, to table this bill in front of the committee. Um, Chair, I just want to request to, to, uh, to, to stop my video because I have um, network issues, if you don't mind. Kruger, we don't mind because I have seen you and, the, and all other members in the meeting have seen you. If you switch Thank off you. your uh, video, it's fine. Thank you, Chair. And then I also uh, request the committee chair just to um, give me the opportunity to share my screen. Uh, the, the Secretariat will do that, Mr. Kruger. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sberko will do that. Is my screen shared already? Can everybody yes, see my that. presentation? Not yet, not yet. It's going to be fixed. Who's helping with the screen? I uh, chair, I have given uh, Mr. Kruger the right to, to share the screen so, she, okay. he, so he can do it uh, from his side. Mr. Kruger, uh, can you share it from your, from your side? Somebody must just help me now. How do I do that? I thought it will be done from the committee side. Mm. Uh, Chair, can I advise? Please. Yeah, you can. Yes. Can, 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 I, can I share the presentation from my side, Chair? And yes, I'll just please. put it uh, uh, Mr. Kruger as he has equal along to assist the process. Yes, do that. And uh, take into account our ages, uh, must call it. <laughs> we, are, we were born before I uh, technology, so I, I bear with Mr. Kruger. He's like me. Okay. Can you share that? Yeah, it's coming up. I can see it now. Yes, uh, I've shared it. Check and uh, Mr. Kruger stage. So everybody, every can everybody see my 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 screen, my presentation. Yeah, we see it, but we are on the conclusion now. Yeah. It's not supposed to be on the conclusion. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, there it is now. That, that's why. He's up uh, doing business. Wait a minute. Uh, let me just go back again. Uh, Mr. Kruger, I'll operate it from my side. All right. So... It's ease of doing business, private members, bill the first um, slide now. Yes. All right. Um, thank you, Chair, um, and, and thank you for the opportunity um, to discuss um, 
this bill and the passion of mine um, about small businesses. Uh, Jay, the, the ease of doing business bill is the solution to address the triple challenges facing South Africa. Successful small business development and the creation of a business-friendly environment are key in addressing inequality, poverty, and unemployment. Through you, Jay, the members must understand that to start and run a successful business in South Africa is very, very difficult. And we rank very low on the World's Bank Ease of Doing Business Index. And I know there's a lot of debate about this index, but this is not um, the debate today. The bill is not only about reducing red tape, um, Jay, but also to give government an opportunity to create a business-friendly environment. Apart from red tape, the bill also seeks to address service delivery, registration of property, financing, trading across the borders, markets, enforcing of contracts, and administrative cost to comply to regulatory burdens and procedures. So I'm, I'm for change. And, 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 and these two photos show that um, change is possible. The, the photo on your left-hand side is me in 2060. And the photo on the right-hand side is me in 2020. Um, I lost 45 kilograms and I got a, a, a lot of hair. So, um, Jay, on a lighter note, note change is possible. Um, I experienced it for myself. Now, the purpose, when designing this bill, my thoughts was with SMMEs and SMMEs only. On the troublesome journey to try to make sense of the environment they find themselves in. That's why I thought of the purpose first before we put this bill together. And I call it my why factor. Why do I want to introduce a private member's bill of this sort? And it was also important for me to make sure that this bill get political buy-in. And gee, this bill is not about cheap political points or any political points. This bill is about small businesses and to change the environment they must do business in. So the main focus that was important when this bill was put together was, first of all, to make sure business can overcome the binding and systemic constraints of government on business. Secondly, to make sure that business operate in a business-friendly environment. Thirdly, we must level the play fields for all businesses. See, there is still a massive gap between big business, small business, informal business, township business, rural business, and the tunny on the street selling our apples. We need to fix that. And this bill will try to address that. And that, of course, number four is cut red tape for business when interacting with government. The principles of this bill, okay, are agreed by many worldwide and implementing the bill will take small business, which are the engine room of this economy, forward. The debate 
on red tape and ease of doing business is with us since 1994. In 2004, a company called SBP conducted a comprehensive study of the cost of red tape to the South African economy. The costs were estimated at 6.5% of GDP, or 79 billion rand per annum. If we translate it to the present, it could be as high as 342 billion rand per annum. Jay, that's a huge cut out of our GDP. In every Sona speech, the president of the time will elevate red type as a problem for SMMEs. And um, this year was exactly the same. In 2012, RIA guidelines was issued by the presidency, although the principle of the guidelines was in the right direction, RIA never took off, of course, to the disadvantage of uh, small businesses. In 2015, the Socio-Economic Impact Assessment, Assessment CIAS, was issued by DPME. The guidelines provide for a central unit that seeks vetting for draft primary and secondary legislation. CIAS approaches the assessments by estimating the cost and benefits for different socio-economic groups. Jay, the CIAS approach is commendable in its focus. However, the focus on itself does not address the purpose of this private members bill. In 2018, my MBA dissertation highlighted the hinders of red tape on small businesses and concluded that red tape disable the environment in which SMME must operate. In 2019, um, if you look at the document on page six, the document's name is um, Economic Transformation, Inclusive Growth and Competitiveness Towards an Economic Strategy for South Africa, prepared by National Treasury. It states clearly, the cost of compliance with red tape make it much more expensive for small businesses. A commitment to reduction of red tape can unlock opportunities for small business. And this I quoted directly out of the document, Jay. Now, in 21, we sit with this ease of doing business private members bill um, that was um, designed and developed specially to, um, to make sure that business operate in a business-friendly environment. Um, and it was, it's, it, it's there for business only. Now, Jeb, we also had a look at the world best practices. And we conclude that on this few points here, um, for, for this bill to work, we need maximum political commitment. We need also the politicians and the officials to buy into this bill and to support this bill administratively and politically. We need to implement in it the whole of government. In, for, in other words, it must be implemented on a national level, on a provincial level, and on a local level. And then very important, uh, service delivery mindset. Well, service delivery is one 
apart from red tape, is one of the big issues that hinder small business. Um, small business need electricity. Small business need water. Small business need roads to take the products to the markets. Small business need roads to, to uh, let the, uh, the raw material be delivered to them. So service delivery, it's, it's a huge, important part. And this bill will address that. And of course, stakeholder engagement, I mean, we all um, agree with that. And then uh, the fourth revolution. We need to use the fourth revolution and the, and the principles of the fourth revolution to, to measure uh, uh, our um, the, the, the importance of the bill. Performance management, of course, and then we must simplify it. So you will see if you if you went through the bill, which I presume everybody did, um, on one page we talked about um, calculating the cost of red tape. And if you look at the model we use there, it's called the, um, the standard cost model. It's a very straightforward calculation to calculate the cost of red tape. And that's what I'm saying. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Can I repeat that, um, Jay, please? If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Now, the, to get back to the bill, the objects of the private member's bill is to create capacity in government to measure, control, and reduce the social, economic, impact of regulatory burdens on SMMEs. And SMMEs is very important in, in, in this bullet point. Ensure the consideration of multiple options by organ of states to achieve their objectives. So this, this we, we need to, to think out of the box. Measure and reduce red tape and the cost associated with it when doing business in the Republic. Create a business friendly environment for business. So Jay, you can see uh, there's a difference between red type and the business friendly environment. Red type is part of a business friendly environment and assistance to business to ease doing business. So, uh, apart from creating a business-friendly environment, we also need business with their problems when it, when it comes to the ease of doing business and seek to provide for the establishment of administrative unit to assist the executive members of parliament committees of the house and self-regulatory bodies. Uh, Jay, as I said, uh, I presume everybody went through the bill, so I'm just going to, to highlight uh, um, the chapters. Chapter one um, deals with the definitions. Um, clause one deals with the definitions used, definitions used in the bill. Clause two set out the objects of the bill. And clause three um, is the applications of the bill. And then chapter two, uh, it's about the setup of the administrative unit to manage the whole regulatory impact assessment process. Because that, that is the, the important part of this bill is the, um, the regulatory impact assessment process. Clause 4 in Chapter 2 provides for the establishment of the um, unit. Clause 5 and 6... Um, it's about the duties of the unit, and clause seven, it's about the reporting um, requirements of the unit. Then there's a chapter three, which provides for the evaluation of new regulatory measures. Um, it sets out the clause eight, sets out the then general responsibility of ministers, members of parliament, and committees of the two houses. 
clause nine um, provides for a mapping exercise. And, and T, if, if, if any of the members want to find out more about the mapping process, I'm willing um, to discuss it. It's quite a very interesting process, how to map a regulatory measure um, and, and then test it um, if there's any burdens for, for anybody. So in chapter 11 and 12, same uh, mapping exercise, but it also um, prepared um, for self-regulatory bodies. Because sometimes, in, and especially in South Africa, self-regulatory bodies also um, manufacture red tape. Um, and, and, and sometimes businesses, it's, it's head on with self-regulatory bodies because of the um, red tape that hinders them to take forward. Then um, chapter four deals then with existing regulatory measures to go back in the, in the past and, and, and check those regulatory measures for, 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 for hinders of small business. And then chapter five deals that, um, about the provisions and includes um, you know, gen just general um, provisions. So um, that's more or less what's the bill about. Uh, the bill itself, it's about, uh, I think, four or five pages. Um, and um, so it's not very difficult to go through. And I'm, as I say, I'm sure the members went through it already. Now, surely we consultate very wildly, um, widely, um, when we uh, start thought about this bill. And um, on page 30 and 31 and 32, you will find references um, where we uh, studied, you know, literature about the position and about CRs and about red tape and about everything in connection um, with this bill. So we did a lot of research, um, Che, and, and, and the members can, can um, make themselves, if they have time, and read through all these um, references. Um, I'm sure it will take a while, but for, for interest sake, it, it's good reading if you're passionate about business as myself. Uh, um, Jay, the proposed way forward, um, I think it was already um, handled on the agenda and by yourself and uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, I think we need to consult with Small Business Development Committee as well. Um, maybe invite them to this committee um, or maybe um, get their inputs about the bill, uh, get the inputs about the Department of Small Business Development, um, invite business chambers um, to this committee to get their inputs um, so that we can discuss this bill and, of course, public participation. But um, business chambers, uh, we need, this bill is so important for the survival of small businesses that we need to um, need to um, make sure that this bill is to the benefit of small businesses. Jay, to conclude my presentation, the following. We are moving towards a disabled business environment because of the after effects of the pandemic. Three de decades of unnecessary regulatory burdens have hindered the starting and the running of small businesses, and subsequently also hindered economic growth and the creation of jobs. So we must just be very clear that regulatory burdens is not just about 
um, you know, procedures and what have you. Service delivery is also part of a regulatory burden because service delivery, delivery is, is governed by, by legislation. And if service delivery doesn't take place, it becomes a regulatory burden. So policy uncertainty and reluctance to challenge the red tape problem has resulted in tragedy and embarrassment from which there may be no return. Service delivery by government cut the wings of small business. And remember we said um, small business is the engine room of this economy. Small business, um, the small business strategy of the government is the only strategy that can save South Africa. Um, it's inspiring to be alive in the season of change. Uh, ch change is a reality and the business community needs change now. The ease of doing business, private members will ease the change. SMMEs are waiting for 27 years. I thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Jake. Thank you, Mr. Kruger. Uh, can I now invite the presidency to make an input here since uh, in the office of the presidency, there is a branch that deals with uh, socioeconomic impact assessment. So I, I invite the presidency to make an input and provide the guidance where necessary. Thank you, thank you uh, Chairperson, and greetings to uh, the members, honorable members of uh, the Portfolio Committee. Thank you for the invitation, and also thank you to uh, Honorable Member Kruger for the presentation on the Private Member Bill of the Ease of uh, Doing Business. I'm going to share a presentation. I've also been accompanied by uh, my colleagues, uh, Ms. Gaino McMaster and Ms. Tantokozo Mbata, who are also part of the Socioeconomic uh, Impact Assessment System Unit in the Presidency. Let me share the presentation. Uh, through you, Chair, um, are you able to see the presentation? Yes, I can see it on my side. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the presentation will cover understanding of the socioeconomic impact assessment, uh, how it was introduced in government and the key principles that uh, we apply when doing CS and uh, some of the initiatives that we are working on and comments on the private member bill. So CS is um, actually an ex ante policy analysis tool uh, to strengthen uh, our policies and laws. And it's uh, thought provoking, it's interactive, independent and multidimensional. So it's not uh, only focusing on one aspect of um, socioeconomic um, sectors but it looks into how a particular policy proposal or legislation will address the challenges that um, uh, the vulnerable groups are faced with, the triple uh, challenges that we have uh, of poverty, unemployment, and economic growth, issues of inequality, including also uh, the spatial inequalities, the rural and urban dynamics, uh, issues of sustainable environment, competitiveness, governance, looking at uh, the capacity, uh, the skills and ethical issues. So it has to be applied throughout policy making. So you don't develop a bill and start doing CS. You have to uh, apply CS at early stages of identifying uh, a particular problem. 
So it's, it's a tool that assists decision-making to guide whether we should regulate or not and what is already existing and how can we maximize existing opportunities to address the socioeconomic challenges. And through CS, we have an understanding that regulation have impacts that can negatively or positively affect the society. And some of the laws um, are implementable uh, looking at big businesses, but can negatively affect uh, the SMMEs, it looking at um, the dynamics of the society, and also to say, um, how do we reverse you know, the challenges of, of the past? So through CS departments analyze broader socioeconomic challenges, associated cost and risk, and develop uh, mitigation actions, and ensure that uh, our policy proposals are aligned to the NDP. So uh, the CS unit, unlike what is proposed in the bill, we do not do impact assessment on behalf of departments. They initiate the process because they are the custodians of the laws that they are developing and they have a better understanding, but we do analysis and to ensure that there is no subjectivity in terms of decisions that are being made. Uh, just to give an example of, um, the, some of the evolution of regulatory impact assessment, for example, in the US around the 70, 1978, um, under the leadership of, of Jimmy Carter, there were challenges around rising inflation and weakening uh, currency. And uh, uh, there was an introduction of inflation impact assessment and at the times of uh, former president Ronald Reagan, there were also an introduction of cost benefit analysis where uh, there was a, a, a kind of an executive order that was introduced for that says, looking at um, the regulations that are coming from uh, the federal government and, and where it was also mentioned that for example, a regulatory action undertaken unless the potential benefits to the society uh, from the regulation outweigh the potential cost. So it has always been around uh, making um, the lives of citizens uh, to, to improve. And other countries followed with the regulatory impact assessment, including the OECD countries, and in South Africa, a cabinet approved the introduction of RIA as a tool for better regulation. And it was piloted uh, for about two years, ending in 2009. And there were also changes with uh, the departments that were involved in the regulatory impact assessment. Um, so moving forward, the introduction of CS uh, came in 2014, where the CS unit was established within a DPME. And um, there was also approval that all policies, bills, and regulations have to be subjected to CS with an official implementation date of 1st of October 2015. And also through the President's Coordinating Council, PCC, um, there was an approval that CS be rolled out to provinces and municipalities. And I must indicate that CS has been institutionalized in, in departments where we have over 608 policy proposals that went through CS, majority which are bills, uh, policies and regulations. I must indicate that uh, ministers, uh, even when doing regulations, because regulations don't go to cabinet, are, are leading uh, to ensure that CS is applied when doing regulations. So ministers will say, we will not publicize our regulations without CS, and they will not even approve those regulations without having uh, CS being done. So it, it has been fully been institutionalized, and they would be actually be surprised when uh, this kind of arrangement is uh, regulated. They, they have agreed collectively as cabinet that they will implement uh, the CS. And I must indicate that even last year when we were reviewing the CS templates, cabinet also approved the changes that were effected in the CS template. They approved the manual 
and they collectively um, implement in the socioeconomic impact assessment. I must indicate that it's not only about dealing with um, uh, regulatory measures or primary and secondary legislation, but the president uh, with his cabinet is in the forefront uh, to address uh, some of the impediments that affect businesses. Uh, so for example, in the previous uh, 2019 SONA, he indicated that policy impediments must be removed and the ease of doing business must be improved. Um, and with uh, one of um, his work was to also ascend the ele electronic deeds registration bill into law so that it can uh, improve uh, on some of the indicators of the ease of doing business. He also mentioned that public policies must be evidence-based and effectively coordinated and complicated and lengthy regulatory processes must be addressed. And he's in the forefront of ensuring uh, that this is happening like the reduction of uh, turnaround time on the issuing of water use license. He also led also on um, improving the visa regulation. And with the new uh, operation Vulinjela within uh, that is led by National Treasury and uh, the presidency office, they are leading on some of the structural economic reforms uh, such as in water, energy, transport, visa and telecommunication sectors. And broadly, these issues will benefit uh, business and it will also benefit the broader society. And the focus is not only on these other elements, but also on the revitalization of rural and township economy, uh, facilitating investment as well as infrastructure to support economic growth. So those are strategic, impactful uh, priorities that uh, government is working on. And with the issues of ensuring that public policies have to be evidence-based and uh, streamlining our programs as government, he established a, a policy and research services branch within the presidency to ensure that there is that uh, coherent policy making with the transfer of the CS unit from DPME to be uh, in the presidency. Um, so some of the key issues with regard to applying CS is that we, 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 we focus on broader issues, not only on business, because we understand the interrelationship of business, of household, of firms, of government. So if you have a, 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 a conducive environment for business, you also need households to have income so that they're able to buy from businesses, otherwise they will not be sustainable. So we have to look at all other aspects of the society and not only on business, but we understand that if we also create a favorable uh, environment for business, it will create jobs and contribute uh, to uh, our, our taxes in the country. So, um, so some of the key issues is to only focus also on broader issues and uh, trade-offs, but also to look into whether is it necessary to regulate or, or not through the, the, the CS processes. But we also support that credible evidence have to be used uh, for research as well as um, uh, analysis of alternatives of addressing socioeconomic um, uh, challenges. What is key also in the process is to engage other departments at early stages, organs of state and key stakeholders uh, when doing policies so that you can gather more evidence and work towards uh, coherent policy making. So in terms of, for example, our CS templates, we look into estimated costs and benefits, but we give opportunities to external stakeholders to say, Tell us how will this particular legislation affect uh, your work as business uh, or other stakeholders and what are the potential risk that comes with this particular law. But we also say to departments, if you are not taking these comments, what is your view or your position as a department in addressing uh, the concerns that have been raised by the public? So uh, bills also have to be, in, you don't do research 
and you rush to regulate. It has to be narrated in a form of a policy where you outline all the challenges, all the policy principles. And as you write a public policy, it will tell you what areas have to be regulated. Otherwise, the policy will not be enforceable. So we look at also resource allocations that it's not about writing a good policy but, or, or a law, but it has to be supported by resources and it has to look into issues of budget prioritization because we are financially constrained as government and opportunities for uh, innovation. The other aspect of policy making and bills is to say, tell us upfront on how are you going to monitor this particular law? How are you going to evaluate that is actually making impact uh, to uh, the society as well as to the national priorities? And how are you going to monitor so that you can swiftly intervene or terminate that policy if it's not working or come up with um, improve, uh, continuous improvements so that we achieve the national priorities? In terms of our support initiatives, we believe in continuous improvement and uh, capacitating uh, departments. So we have finalized a CS curriculum with National School of Government to offer formal trainings on the application of socioeconomic impact assessment. And the courses are commencing in August. We have community of practice to look at various ranges of issues and I must indicate one of the challenges of um, some of um, uh, the policy practitioners is the quantification of our policies and laws. And we have made arrangements uh, with some of uh, the academia to assist in terms of uh, uh, various modeling of um, a quantification, but also to forecast our policies to be able to look uh, beyond a, a term of office on the implication of our policies. We have came up with a national framework for policy development to guide departments on policy making, to guide them on how to uh, uh, coming up with standards of what is expected when you develop a policy, what is the uh, expected duration to finalize your policies, how to use evidence, how to work with various units within departments, your research, uh, finance, how to work with your m and &E to come up with a theory of change and, and uh, how to engage with stakeholders. So those are some of the elements that comes uh, with this uh, national framework. And we are working with DPME on evidence mapping and guidelines on how to assist departments to gather evidence that uh, assist in policy making but also sourcing from the evaluation work that is done by DPME as part of evidence in policy analysis. So they are doing various evaluations on policies and legislation, and it guides on areas of improvement. And we have established a public policy development and research network that comprise of national, provincial, and, and municipalities, as well as academia to strengthen our research and uh, also looking at uh, the multi-year research uh, products. We are also uh, initiating a process with Department of Justice and Constitutional uh, Development. So this work is approved by cabinet that we have to look at obsolete legislation and initiate a process of repeal or review. So it can be regarded as some of a uh, deregulation, particularly on, on businesses. And currently uh, we are working with DPME and other uh, uh, departments to reduce the turnaround time it takes to finalize bills so that we have a shorter turnaround time, but without compromising um, uh, the, the contents and the quality of our policies. So with regard to uh, the bill that has been initiated, we thank um, uh, honorable member, uh, Mr. Kruger and the team for putting together uh, this bill. But we want to highlight uh, some of the issues with regard to the bill. Uh, firstly, around the institutional arrangements. Uh, so it establishes the RIA unit, which we feel that uh, it's a duplication of what is existing uh, by the CS unit. 
And it also encroaches on mandates of other departments, uh, such as small business development and trade industry and competition, because it makes now the minister in the presidents to be responsible for, for these areas. Uh, as I indicated, that government is already working on structural economic reforms and what also the president is leading. And uh, the other issues are around separation of power. So if members of parliament and committees are submitting private member bills to the RIA unit, what if we have different views on the findings uh, around um, uh, the regulatory impact statements, what, what's going to happen? And uh, what are the implications if um, the members uh, don't follow uh, the RIA, the RIA uh, process as uh, required by, by this bill? What, what are the implications thereof? And we have to also look into a holistic approach of red tape. So it's not only happening at national, we have um, other functions uh, according to uh, the schedules of the constitution uh, where provinces, for example, issue licenses and municipalities. So we cannot only uh, leave it at national. So what are the implications to holistically address red tape in provinces and municipalities through their various uh, bylaws and other processes? And on functions, it takes away responsibilities of impact assessment from departments. So it expects the RIA unit to be the one that does um, uh, the regulatory impact uh, statements. And I must indicate that we are receiving a volume of uh, bills that are coming from uh, ministries and, mm -hmm. and how, how can uh, uh, RIA now be able to do uh, the statements for all uh, these uh, bills that are coming through. And consideration of special inequalities on business and uh, Mr. Kruger also touched on the issues of service delivery uh, to create a, a, that uh, conducive environment for businesses and uh, also consider other socioeconomic factors. Uh, evaluations have to be strategically in terms of how has red tape reduction contributed to businesses as opposed to uh, the reduction of red tape uh, in terms of percentages, but it has to be mapped into a bigger picture to say after we have reduced the red tape, let's say by 25%, we were able to see our businesses being sustainable and we are able to point that those businesses created additional jobs and they have contributed uh, to the economic growth. So those are some of um, our comments with regard to the ease of doing business uh, bill. Uh, so uh, Chairperson, I will end with my presentation here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, thank you. Uh, honorable members, there was a suggestion earlier which I, I seem to support that uh, parties represented in the portfolio committee must take this input by Mr. Kruger and the additions by DPME in the presidency uh, back to their principal so that we we get uh, guidance from our principals. Are we all in agreement with that? Yes, Chair. Yeah. Yes, Chair. Yes, chair. Mm -hmm. chair, can I can I make a comment uh, on, on the presentation yeah. of the department? Okay, Chairman, I will, Chairman, after Chairman. you have done that, I will note uh, uh, Honorable Lusoma, Honorable Nduli, and Honorable Gidi. Come in, Honorable Nduli. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair would like to welcome um greetings to everyone Jefferson. um uh, we would like to 
welcome the presentations uh, that have been tabled to the committee, portfolio committee. Firstly, by uh, uh, Honorable Kruger, uh, Mr. Kruger, and um, uh, the presidency. I, I think, Chairperson, as a committee, we are very much uh, uh, happy uh, to see people like uh, Mr. Kruger, who bothers and worries themselves about the entire community. Safe to say, um, the government is at work. Uh, in those words, Chairperson, we would love to, to welcome uh, the, the, these presentations. And yes, Chairperson, um, after the, the presentation of the private members bill, we are supposed to go back to our principles, to our caucuses, uh, to look at uh, the, the proposed uh, bill uh, a bit closer and uh, discuss uh, at a later stage. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Ntuli. Can I invite Honorable Lesom? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Honorable Chair, and good morning, colleagues. I'm sure my colleague, Honorable Kivi, did register my apology that I'll be joining meetings slightly late, but I had an advantage of going through the, the, the presentation, both from legal services and also from uh, the presidency and uh, Mr. Kruka's uh, uh, members bill as it were. Chair, if we may allow us, but also agreeing with Honorable Ntuli's uh, point of that, let's welcome and appreciate the, the work and the time that has been spent to the bill. Uh, but allow me, Chair, if I may, to ask some questions. It's up to Mr. Uh, Kruger, whether Honorable Kruger, whether he responds now or he responds in writing so that probably can be very explicit in some of in his response. If, if I omitted what is covered in his presentation. Uh, when going through the bill, I, 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 I noticed that it suggests a, a, a standalone, I wouldn't necessarily call it a unit, it's a, a fully fleshed department, which then does have a financial implications and structural uh, implication as it were. Uh, does this suggest that should we then have a fully fledged department and invest and redirect money to establish a new department or the existing one as per the presentation by the president's office? But also noting that at one stage, because we must not be talking both sides of the mouth of our mouth as a committee now, because I'm just borrowing from what our previous engagements on other subject matter, that some of us were feeling that the public service wage bill needs to be managed. With this proposed bill, what would be its implication on that notion? Two, Chair, with reference to the bill, would it not encroach into the mandate of other departments, such as your treasury, your small de de a a business department, your, your, your economic de department as it were, and also taking note in terms of economic department, the international treaties that we, we have signed as a country as well. Uh, shouldn't we be mindful with that? But however, then probably in his response, then he will assist us when we come back and apply our minds on the bill uh, to say what is the most uh, applicable one. Because from where I'm seated, having read the bill, it seems like it's all over. But also it doesn't say, I, I, I hope because I've joined the meeting later, I'm doing this one with cautious that he had covered the multidisciplinary responsibility that the bill seeks to propel, that how is it going to be managed that one. The other question, Chair, uh, that I, I would like to, 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 to see that, uh, so the object of the bill 
it also made a mention that the president's social economic impact assessment system does not sufficiently uh, address the cost of the red tape as it were. But having listened to, to the president, I think I'm covered. But in terms of, 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 of Mr. Kruger, I know that you wouldn't come out with this bill if you haven't done any thorough research as it were. Is there evidence from your side that leads to this conclusion that they haven't done that, hence a, a newly fleshed bill that seeks to suggest a new department? Uh, but because also that the fourth chair is that I assume also you have uh, made a, a not a fully a fully fleshed public uh, consultation. If you can be, uh, can share with us what are the comments from the people that you have com you have consulted through your own uh, individual own research process, what were their comments? If you can share with us through the administration, you can be very much happy with that. Uh, other than that, Chair, let me also echo the words of my colleague who will apply definitely our minds on the bill and engage as the committee I'm suggesting now in our next meeting so that we don't also uh, cloud the process as it were, as I think you have directed the meeting to do so. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, for the opportunity once more. Thank you, Honorable uh, Lesoma. Can I invite Honorable Kibi? Uh, thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, the questions that I wanted to pose here because I needed some clarity on some issues uh, covered by Honorable Lithoma and also I support what uh, has been raised by Honorable Schreiber at the beginning that we need to go and consult our principals. But in addition to, to what Honorable Lithoma has asked, I just want to get clarity on uh, section four of, the, of this bill made mention of the minister responsible and the definition does not prescribe which ministry will be re responsible for the implementation of the act. And also which ministry, uh, yeah. And also uh, the act further proposed the establishment as Honorable Lisoma have also raised the regulatory impact assessment unit. Is this not going to be a duplication of roles and responsibilities with what the presidency, the president's office is doing currently? If the bill proposes establishing a unit, will this not contribute towards unresolved crisis of the wage bill that, gov that government is currently uh, grappling with? So those are my clarity seeking questions. I thank you, Honorable Chair. I also support uh, uh, Honorable Lissoma that it can be written, the responses can be written, but I really appreciate and welcome both presentations. Thanks, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kibi. Can I invite Honorable Komani? Thank you very much. Good morning, colleagues, a for you, Chairperson, and let us also welcome the presentation of the bill and the other presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair, uh, forgive me for not putting on my video because I'm, I'm in the dark. There's load shading here where I am. So, Chair... Uh, it, it is everywhere, this load shading, uh, <laughs> Honorable Coleman. That is uh, why we are not putting our videos uh, on as well. Okay. It's everywhere. Uh, we bear with you on that, in that regard. Okay. I will, I will, I will bear the same sentiment and 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 concur with the proposal by Honorable Schreiber, and uh, equally uh, would uh, most of my questions have been posed by my 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 colleagues from uh, from the committee. However, Chair, uh, uh, one would just want uh, to get maybe so that one puts a, 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 a mind clear when she, she, she goes through with this bill with the, with, together with the principals to say, what really informs the development of this bill? Maybe the, if we can maybe be, be, be given that uh, uh, clarity. And Chair, uh, again, uh, for the reduction of many bills be made, doesn't the author or, or the, the presenter of this uh, bill think 
that we need to put more effort into the capabilities and capacity of the state to be able to deliver on its policies and programs rather than to, because where, where one is seated, uh, Chair, this uh, uh, seemed to be a duplication and uh, 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 to, because the, the, we've got almost the same roles that are, 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 are depicted in this bill. They are the same roles and, and uh, they, uh, there are expectations of the same from the office of the, uh, in the uh, office of the president. So can't we make uh, maybe uh, uh, look it into that and, and find where we duplicate so that maybe uh, uh, we, we can be uh, well positioned, but safe to say, maybe if one can have the, 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 what informs the development of this bill, one would then be able to can understand and make a, a, a clear a, a distinction. But uh, thank you very much. I think uh, Honorable Soma has, uh, has captured me in, in various uh, questions and thank you very much, Shea. Thank you, Honorable Komani. Can I invite Honorable McFloor? Thank you so much, Chairperson. And also thank you for the presentation of, of, of both parties. I, I would suggest, Chair, that, that we really apply our minds, you know, even at this time, uh, to both of these bills. Because for me, I, I would argue that it's not business as usual. Looking specifically to the timing of the proposal. Yes, I agree with, with some of the honorable members that it might speak to one another. But this proposal comes at a time where we have roughly 10 billion people unemployed. And during COVID, we, we have lost two, two, uh, 2 million jobs. The other thing also, what, the, the, what, what has been presented uh, for me speaks to uh, the implementation of structural reform is uh, how the presidency has, has put it. And, and that reform should then entails the unleash of a economic growth for South Africa. And, and we all know that there are reports that it's not good, it's not good even now, you know, Pre-COVID, business, businesses has lost confidence, and 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 and, and it is and, and and it has been very 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 low. So I think both, both both uh, presentations that has been made has the potential to create jobs. But maybe we should go into. I, I, I just just want to take out one fraction, and 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 and, and, and that is the reform issue. Now, if you look at if you look at the bill that is been uh, uh, also introduced by uh, the presidents, you will find that this has been already been, been there was already attempts in 1998, but now recently it has a recovery plan. And, and I want to say this in line with what is presented by Honorable Krieger. It, 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 it actually have a recovery plan of electricity, bulk water, and something which I'm very passionate about, and that is the visa regime including the digital uh, communication. Now, I want to pose this question. I want to pose this question. If you look what is happening and you unpack these systematically, one must ask one the question whether, you know, when it comes to the independence of, of power producers, we are sitting in dark now. Has we have played as a country our role to have the independent power producers uh, in, in place? Well, we need to answer that. Coming to the digital uh, communication, uh, the allocation of, 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 of spectrums. And, and if you open newspapers today, you'll find that, uh, that uh, they are currently un under uh, litigation. So the question is, are we meeting our targets when it comes to this bill that speaks to one another that has been uh, 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 pre presented to us? And you know, fortunately so, Chairperson, this is not ideology. Uh, uh, differences. It is a plain and simple thing that has been implemented that must be implemented by government. And I and, and know someone just spoke about the capacity. Uh, uh, yes, there's a problem of capacity. And someone spoke about the implementation. There's a complete lack of imp implementation. But also, where there is departments that don't have capacity, we find that they are actually succeed in what they want to do. But in a, a case in point, if you if you if you if you look at 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 at, at, the, at the reform structure uh, uh, pre and post COVID, 
we must ask ourselves, you know, the, the, the bullying glela, uh, has it worked? Uh, uh, the, the unemployment numbers has, 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 has increased. And, and as, a, as, as a matter of fact, you know, our people must rely on the state when it comes to social security and all of, and all of this. So now there's one thing, and, and, and I've asked a question to the presidency, and this is what I think we as a committee needs to define chair. And that is the commitment by investors. There was commitments being made by investors. There was a round table being held in 2020, in November, and, and we, in terms for, for us as a committee to play our oversight role, we must ask ourselves that questions. Uh, actually, we need answers to say, what was Domans? And if we only define what commitments was, we as members of parliament will then do our oversight to see whether this bill are really implemented out there. So I think uh, I, I would love to agree and perhaps if the committee as such uh, create a platform where members can send uh, uh, their questions and these questions be formulated and directed to, to, to Honorable Creer and uh, from our various uh, stakeholders and, and, and all and see to what extent if they if this to speak to one another, what can we then change into the current bill instead of create a new bill? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can I invite now? Uh... Honorable Mtsipe. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, I would like to share the very same sentiments that my honorable members have already shared with, and then especially with the issue of taking this to our own organization in order that we must come back with proper mandate from the organization because this bill is not something that we can be agreed on and then just take a decision without taking back to where it must take him to. And I've got uh, uh, two things that I need clarity on. Uh, one is, is in reducing the red tape and impact negative to the micro, small and medium sized business. Is the red tape not caused by lack of better policy, coordination and coherence among government department. And then on the memorandum of object of the bill, it was made mentioned that the presidency socioeconomic impact assessment system does not sufficiently address the cost of the red tape. Is there any evidence-based study that led to this conclusion? Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kruger, uh, you have mentioned that uh, there are views also to other, from other stakeholders that you have uh, consulted. Can, can you share with the committee, not today, but uh, right to the secretary of the committee uh, indicating those uh, stakeholders that you have been in touch with in the process of this uh, this bill uh, yes um thank you um chair with pleasure um, um i will um, send it to the um, secretary because we did a wide consultation with um, other stakeholders and uh, we will uh, send um, the results um, to the committee. Chairperson, will I have the opportunity to ask the questions? Because it seems most of the questions is, um, is directed to me. We, we, we indicated, uh, Mr. Kruger, that you will answer them in writing to the committee. Send the answers to the questions to the office of the secretary of the committee. Uh, Chair, um, there is a few um, comments that I want to make um, regarding the questions. Um, can I make the comments then? These comments must not be the answers to the question now. No, no, no. Uh, okay, okay. 
All right. Okay. Um, I, I, who's that? Honorable Komani. Yes, Honorable Komani. Thank you very much, Chair, for uh, permitting me to speak uh, for you to Mr. James. But uh, I, I, I mean, Mr. Mr. Kruger, I think, Chair, it is only going to be fair if uh, we, 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 we maintain the uh, the, the, the proposal by the committee that was endorsed by, your, by, by, by you as the chairperson to say, Mr. Kruger can, uh, uh, should, because uh, I would be maybe uh, uh, tempted to maybe want to make follow-ups on the comments that he would be making now. So can he please make that in writing and, and send it to the committee so that we look into it. The comments should also be included in those responses. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, you are right, uh, Honorable Command. Do that, Mr. Kruger, please. Yes, Chair, I will. I will definitely. Uh, but maybe there's a misunderstanding of my position in Parliament because I, I hear uh, members call me Mr. Uh, and maybe they don't understand that I'm a member of Parliament, number one, and that I, um, for seven years I served on the um, Small Business Development Committee. Um, so, and that's just one thing I want to make um, hundred percent um, clear, and the other thing I want to make clear: this is this is not um, throwing CLs out of the out of the door. This is just an additional unit in in the yeah. department of the yeah. presidency. But uh, 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 yeah. Mr. Yeah. Kruger, Mr. Yeah. Kruger, He's Mr. Kruger, Mr. Kruger, you you are doing exactly what we say you should not do. Reply to questions raised in writing. Please do that. Uh, honorable members, can I now invite the, the Public Service Commission? Jay, um, just on a point uh, of order. Chair, Jay, sorry, just on a point of order. Um, can I leave the meeting now? Um, I must be at the meeting of small business development. Um, will you excuse me? Yes. Yes. The, you, 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 you can leave, but that, that's not a point of order. It's just a request to leave. And point of request. That. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. You can. You Thank can. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Thank can you. I now invite Thank you. The, can I invite the Public Service Commission? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Deputy Minister, Honorable Members. My name is Mike Selwani. I'm the Commissioner responsible for integrity and anti-corruption in the Public Service Commission. And you have already uh, received the <clears throat> apology from the chairperson. So I am delegated uh, to do a presentation of uh, financial misconduct, which is squarely within uh, the integrity and anti-corruption specialist team of the commission. I am here with the DDG, who will uh, deal with a number of issues uh, when we come to that. And then uh, this report is a report on finalized cases of financial misconduct in the year 2019-2020. So we do the analysis of the <clears throat> the number of cases that have been reported, uh, the number of cases that are pending, and also we look at the number of investigations that are still taking place uh, uh, as far as financial misconduct is concerned. We also look at the amounts of money involved in the uh, uh, cases, and then, uh, uh, we also assess how much is being recovered 
uh, on annual basis uh, with regard to uh, uh, analyzed cases. So the DDG will do through a slide that I will just finalize as concerned to the commission. Uh, DDG Malaz, you can now go ahead with the presentation. Honorable Chair and members of your committee, uh, greetings to all of you. My name is Madumi Malaji, the DDG Integrity and Anti-Corruption in the Public Service Commission. Honorable Chair, you would have noted we have got about 40 slides for you, which we want to take you through, but we'll try to group them so that we, we, we use the time allocated uh, very meaningfully. As the commissioners already introduced the subject, you'll on the slide, uh, can I just check with honorable chair if you can see the screen from your side? Yes, I can see it. Thank you very much. The current slide shows how we approach the presentation, uh, which is what Commissioner has indicated. Now on this slide, we show the legislative basis that requires the accounting officers of all departments in the national and, and uh, provincial um, to report completed disciplinary proceedings on financial misconduct. Um, honorable members would know that this is one of the key topical issues in our public administration, management of financial resources. So given the constitutional mandate of the PSC, uh, we monitor and evaluate amongst others how are departments managing this misconduct. Honorable Chair, I didn't show my, my video uh, in view of what the other colleagues have mentioned um, due to load shedding and to preserve the bandwidth of, of, the, of the network. So please bear with me on that. Um, the objective of this report is to provide an overview on completed uh, disciplinary proceedings on financial misconduct we also reflect on disciplinary uh, proceedings on financial misconduct as at the 31st of March uh, uh, 2020. We analyze trends to check if there is improvements, there is increment of, of uh, financial misconduct committed in the departments. And we have added now the consequence management aspect with regard to unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditures, which were disclosed in, in, in uh, financial reports of departments in their annual reports. So the first part of the information we present is what departments on a quarterly basis submit to the Public Service Commission. So this slide shows the responsiveness um, of the departments. How do they respond in, in providing us the, the information? You will see that uh, Chair, 155 departments uh, out of the 159 national and provincial uh, have submitted reports and the four have failed. The four that have not submitted any uh, uh, such information that we needed to ask is State Security Agency. Uh, and in the Northwest uh, province, we have Education, Department of Health, and then we have Office of the Premier. Um, all of these organizations were engaged uh, by, the, by the Public Service Commission 
um, to impress upon them the importance of submitting this. And in, in, in Northwest, for instance, we, this was reported to the legislature. There was a, a meeting with the uh, office of the premier to impress upon uh, uh, um, the importance of compliance with the law. Now, of the 155 that submitted responses, 61 has reported on, on cases that they've said they've completed and we're going to reflect on that. Now, the remaining 94 reported that there were no completed disciplinary proceedings on financial misconduct. They were still busy with many other uh, uh, processes leading up to that. So of the 61 that, that reported, 530 uh, uh, disciplinary proceedings have been completed, Chairperson, in that year of 2019, uh, uh, 2020. And we break them down, uh, showing at national level, we have 306. Then in the Eastern Cape, in all the provinces, we indicate the numbers as per province. Um, now, we check this financial misconduct. What are the types in this 530 that is completed? We find that is misappropriation of resources uh, and abuse, uh, 202, which is the highest, followed by irregular expenditure, 94, theft, uh, 71, fraud, 63, gross negligence, uh, 55 fruitless and wasteful expenditure is 32. Um, it's just to show the types. What are the details of the cases that are said to have been finalized? Now, these are the salary levels of people involved in the commission of financial misconduct cases. In the, in the 530 cases that we have showed, you would see that level five goes, shoots up and, and exceeds everybody, but it's because at, those are the people who are doing the job um, at lower levels, um, obtaining the, uh, requesting the co codes and, and um, interacting with, 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 with um, uh, administrative processes. Um, when you look at that slide, you check the middle management between levels nine to 12. Uh, these are the people who are managing operations with regard to supply chain management and uh, uh, logistics and, and um, uh, payment of, 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 of suppliers. Uh, then level 13 to 16, which is, um, we, we, we call it SMS, uh, the people who take decisions um, are reflected there. We have about um, uh, 57 of them who are implicated in this, in this, whose cases were completed. I'm going to move on. Um, the, the slides five to, to nine talks of this completed uh, cases, which is 530 of them. Uh, I've already indicated uh, who accounts for the most, which is levels between five and eight. I'm going to skip this slide chair with your permission because I, I've dealt with each SMS accounts for 10, 11%. Uh, MMS accounts for 29% in this case is reported. Um, we have already explained that high level number that uh, missed demeanors, particularly in respect of irregular expenditure re relating to supply chain. They also involve uh, members of the SMS. Those are decision makers. But now of concern is that out of the 530 uh, uh, completed cases, only 57 would be that, that of SMS members. 
I move on to reflect the outcome of completed uh, cases, which is 530 of them. Um, that deceased is not an outcome. It's just to indicate that that hearing did not proceed to its finality uh, because of the untimely passing away. But you see the chair, the guilty findings of, in 392 cases, uh, not guilty, 87, resigned, five, withdrawn, 45. Um, Honorable Chair and members of your committee would know that we have a system of, of due process where after investigation, you present yourself. If you are implicated, you state what your case is, then an independent impartial chair is going to rule uh on the on the guilt or otherwise uh, depending on what you have presented that's why you see there are those who are not guilty after such processes uh, but there are cases that are withdrawn um the withdrawal of cases reasons provided some of them will be uh, for instance in defense they've got a a military court they, can, they do decide to say, we take this and, and charge this member in the military court. And when it comes this side, they say, no, we, we didn't, we, we decided to withdraw the disciplinary uh, uh, proceeding. Is some of the reasons given to us. When we look at sanctions imposed, Chair, uh, this slide 12 does uh, reflect that you'd see um, discharge, which is a dismissal from service, accounts for 57. Then the highest is the final written warning. Then you have written warning, you have a combination of sanctions, then uh, followed by the others like suspension without pay for a period not more than three months, verbal warning, fine, counseling, and demotion. Uh, I just want to indicate that of the 57 that were discharged, um, only uh, not only, but four of them were, were, were members of the SMS, the decision makers. And these are people who oversee implementation of policy, the laws of the land. Um, they are the ones who need to account for this uh, financial misconduct because they manage operations in, 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 in different areas. Um, and Chair would note, as we go ahead on the other slides, when we, we check what is happening in the annual reports, what is the picture? Now, this slide reflects on what has been referred to or reported to, 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 uh, for criminal investigation, because financial misconduct is regarded as a, a, a criminal uh, conduct on the other hand. We have 80 cases reported as such um, for, for criminal investigation. And then that green, the 434 uh, departments reported that no criminal action uh, was instituted. Um, we move on. We, we reflect now on the on the monies involved. This is slide uh, 15. We are on slide 15. You are going to see that uh, about 516 million rands. Um, we can round it to 517 million rands have been uh, uh, was involved in this uh, completed disciplinary cases of misconduct. But it's important here to note if you check the provincial, uh, because we break into national departments, which, which accounts for 51 million. Uh, provincial departments, which is 466 million, um, you will see that in, in the provinces, the department um, 
one department of education in the Eastern Cape reported um, a financial misconduct of 404 uh, million. So that would have uh, uh, um, caused the, the amount to become what it is, uh, or it contributes uh, more to the total amount that is reflected there. Uh, we move on to safe to say, as I pass that slide, uh, disciplinary action of the involved official was, was undertaken and um, a sanction of demotion was meted because was the person was at a director level. Now, we reflect on also on recoveries. As we said, those were the amount involved. We show what has been recovered and what may not be recovered. It was reported to the PSC that uh, 469 uh, uh, million will not, may not be recovered um, from the completed disciplinary proceedings for a number of reasons uh, that they have stated. For one of the reasons would be that uh, the, the department has, has um, benefited uh, or has received services or services were rendered to the department, but it's just that the, the proper procedures were not followed. Um, I'm going to move to the next one to show how recovery goes. Of the 530 completed, um, this is the amount, total national and pro, uh, provincial amount. You can see uh, it, it's just 1.1 million that has been recovered, here, which is very concerning. Um, I'll pass this slide to show uh, the total number of disciplinary pr uh, uh, proceedings on financial misconduct. This part deals with those cases that are not completed uh, in that year, which, which were uh, departments were dealing with, but they, they haven't completed them. Um, where 369 of the 592 showing the chairperson is at national departments, and 223 is at uh, the provincial uh, department. It's important to note that uh, of the national departments, uh, we, we have a department of defense that was still busy with the 282 that were not yet uh, completed. Um, I move on to types of um, Financial misconduct not completed, more or less the same with those that have been completed there, but we see fraud is 264, theft 86, followed by regular expenditure, misappropriation and abuse, gross negligence and corruption. A reason that were given for non-completion because we this, the regulation requires within 30 uh, uh, days, once uh, investigation is finalized, there must be a disciplinary uh, um, there must be a disciplinary proceedings uh, also that is finalized uh, swiftly. Now, Department said no investigating uh, officer busy with outstanding uh, statement. Those are some of the reasons given. Um, still awaiting approval to initiate investigations. Chair would agree that most of these reasons here would not be acceptable. Others would be investigation in progress. The financial misconduct uh, 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 types. It is cases where documentary evidence is all available um, and, and it shouldn't take a person longer time to finalize 
but some of these amounts are huge. So you would need to do a very extensive and thorough uh, investigation. You see that they say application for knowledge process in process, meaning um, there is a process that uh, the prosecutors are, are saying, we are not going to prosecute this person, awaiting appointment of presiding officer, awaiting appointments of military judges uh, to arrange for trial dates, a report of the chairperson awaited, the, the matter has been completed, but they're still awaiting for the outcome, uh, no employee not yet uh, charged. Um, from here, we reflect on the trends um, that, uh, over the period of time, 2016, 2017 to 2019, 2020, uh, what do we see? You'll see in the 16, 17 financial year, the completed cases looked higher uh, as, as, as uh, opposed to the subsequent years, which remained uh, 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 stable at that uh, around 600, uh, and this year is 530. Um, then we look at over those years, how the issue of fraud and theft uh, manifested itself in these cases. Um, still 2016, 17 is higher and followed by 17, 18. Um, in 1819, fraud is higher and theft is lower. So they fluctuate um, over, the period, over the years. Now, this is just salary levels. Uh, what do we see with regard to salary levels over the years? We still say the lower levels account for more transgressions in this um misdemeanors then followed by middle management uh, uh, um, then we have salary levels in 2018-19 uh, you will see that the the where we deal with 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 um, the sms level salary level 13 and 16 which is purple chair it's always coming uh, uh, lower than the, the lowest levels. So those are the people that we say are accountable, that they must ensure the appropriate frameworks are followed and complied with um, instead of, of, of you know, a, lack, a, a lackluster uh, attitude towards their work. Now we check over the years, the outcome of guilty were showing the trends as well, uh, 16, 17, because it was a no high number of cases that was concluded. Then you have a high number there of, of guilty findings. Uh, I already reflected on guilty findings in the, in the current year. The common sanctions imposed uh, over the years, we see green there in the 1617, which is final written warning, uh, followed by written warning in the 1718. And we have in 1819, you'll see there that is, they are almost on a, uh, the same par. Combination of sanctions will be where you get a final written warning, then you get a suspension without salary. That is combination of uh, of uh, sanctions that are imposed. Then trends on criminal proceedings instituted were just showing uh, there is a, a, a issue of reporting of financial misconduct uh, for criminal investigation and, pro and, and prosecution. So, we see there that the 296 were reported for that in the 1617 year, a financial year. 
And in the 1718, uh, which is a red bar, it shows that it, it started um, in the 1718, we had many cases also reported for, for, for criminal investigation. Um, and then there were areas where departments did not indicate, you say criminal proceedings instituted where we need details of that information did not indicate and we are reflecting the numbers there that uh, where no criminal action is instituted and where there is no indication from departments what, what happened. Recovery of monies. Uh, in comparison to the previous three financial years, um, 1920 uh, reported a high amount comprising of 470 million that may not be recovered. This amount is ascribed to a case that I've already indicated in the Eastern Cape, that, that, uh, base, that Department of Education, the 404 million that may not be recovered because the, the department has received the services and action was taken against, uh, against uh, the official uh, involved. Now, seeing that when departments were reporting to us uh, or to the PSC, um, there was a discomfort of the low rate of, of completion of these uh, cases. And, and when we check or monitor the amount that was involved. So PSC sought to go to financial statements disclosed by departments in their annual reports to see how much is disclosed there and uh, what action did the department take. Um, first, discipline. Second, open a criminal case, recovery, how do we manage this consequence uh, uh, management? Um, we have three uh, categories, unauthorized expenditure, irregular expenditure. We have wasteful and fruitless expenditure. We reflect on what we found now in the, in the annual reports as disclosed by, by departments. So this is what uh, uh, departments at, at national you will see here we deal with now billions uh, um, in, 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 in unauthorized expenditure. We have got an amount of 6.6 .6 billion that was uh, um, unauthorized or disclosed in the department's annual reports of 1819 SSS unauthorized. Um, then national takes account of almost uh, 2.8 billion, and then provinces is 3.7 billion rents. Um, we, when we request, when we, we, we uplifted this information from annual reports, we approached the department to say, give us what you have done with this amount of uh, unauthorized expenditures disclosed in your annual uh, financial statements. We received uh, 38 uh, uh, cases. We, we received responses uh, with regard to 38 cases on unauthorized expenditure. Um, of those 38 cases, disciplinary action was instituted in three cases whereby in two employees were found guilty and in one the department indicated that uh, internal controls were strengthened. It, 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 that uh, indication is not, uh, was not explaining the outcome of the disciplinary 
uh, process. The remaining 35 cases departments indicated that no disciplinary uh, proceedings were implemented. Uh, reasons were provided for that, uh, which will be, they are still uh, investigating. Um, but we say, we observe that uh, it appears to there to be no consistency in the determination of unauthorized expenditure. Uh, and this is evident from the response uh, of the Department of Secretariat of Police where procurement irregularities were classified and as um, unauthorized expenditure. While that classification should be irregular expenditure. Irregular expenditure is where there is non-compliance with, uh, with uh, the applicable prescripts. Uh, and on this slide, we reflect on the irregular expenditure. How much did that aspect account for? You would see that uh, an amount of 127 uh, billion when, when all, all added up together uh, and divided to show that with regard to national, it was uh, just under 20 billion and um, in provincial departments is uh, 108 billion if we round it up to the next figure. And this is very concerning. We national and uh, provincial departments, the number of cases thereof were 3,595. Uh, 3, where irregular expenditure occurred. Uh, and this mostly was with regard to non-compliance with supply chain management, uh, which comprised of 93% uh, and 2% cases in, response, in respect to things like uh, when you, you, you do a no-show at an accommodation which has been reserved for you. 1% did not provide the description of the nature of the regular expenditure. Then the remaining four were in respect of uh, human resource uh, uh, irregularities, uh, appointment irregularities, abuse of leave, um, and so on. Then with regard, with, with regard to non-compliance with SCM process, which is a, a topical issue because this is where more, most of our budgets in the public services are dispensed. Um, the non-compliance was with regard to quotations not accepted. Uh, approved by the required responsibility level. You find the person who does not have a delegated authority has approved the quotation. Evaluation criteria of a bid differ with the original specs that were publicized and gazetted. A competitive bidding process not followed, goods and services paid for, but not delivered. Quotations in line with SCM processes the, the issue of goods and services paid, you need to certify that I have received the goods and services that I'm paying or that the department is paying. So once something is paid, but it has not been delivered, it's, it's very problematic. It's non-compliant with uh, the requirement. A bid was not advertised for a minimum of 20, uh, 21 days as required. Now, when we check status of irregular expenditure cases, I all, already indicated the 3,595. We give a summary of uh, what is happening with those cases. Uh, no disciplinary action was instituted in 3,200 cases because 1,599 uh, investigation is still in progress. Then the other number, which is 1,607 chairperson, um, investigation has not yet started. 
Disciplinary action was instituted in 248 cases. Uh, and in 42 cases, disciplinary action was not applicable. There are pending cases, uh, 78 cases. There are 18 cases where nothing was indicated. What is the status? Um, there were two cases formal uh, inquiry was taking place. Um, and in one case, uh, members were disciplined. So there is a snail pace in, 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 in uh, dealing with this matter swiftly. Um, and you will see it, one case starts from the first and, and moves on to be finalized in the fourth year. Um, we continue on irregular expenditure. Uh, this I've already explained. Um, of key to note here is that it's also what I've already stated that um, investigation must be instituted within 30 days after it has been confirmed that irregular expenditure has been incurred. Uh, now that um, regular framework is not being complied with. The salary levels were indicated in 487 cases and based on this, um, mostly SMS level followed by MMS level and lower levels. This one, uh, you see now the flip side of the coin where it reflects that the people who cost or who are responsible for the irregular expenditure are mostly SMS level, followed by the MMS, which is middle management, then the lower levels. Um, of important to note, honorable chair and members, is that the huge amounts pertaining to irregular expenditure does not necessarily mean that this uh, uh, amounts are owed to the state. I've already explained that there are instances where departments say or report that they have received the services, but they did not follow the, 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 the applicable prescripts. There is a phrase which many departments like to use, that phrase, no loss to the state, um, which most of them write to National Treasury and uh, motivate that the department, there was no loss or fraud. Uh, National Treasury, please condone the, the irregular expenditure but that will be done after, after the necessary disciplinary actions have been uh, instituted. When we come to check the fruitless and wasteful expenditure, we see there that uh, an amount of 2.7 billion um, was disclosed in department's annuals, uh, uh, annual financial statements and we divide it in terms of national departments, which is 1.4 billion, and provincial departments, which accounts for 1.3. Um, in this regard, the departments reported 1,081 cases of fruitless and wasteful expense. These are people who, where they say, uh, um, ex employee has, is, 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 is responsible for this uh, fruitless and wasteful uh, expenditure. Um, we indicate that they mostly relate to damage of vehicles comprising of uh, 461, and then the 20% were in respect of no show uh, at. Um, accommodation venues, flights, training, cancellation of flights and accommodation. 11% of those cases, departments indicated that the fruitless and wasteful expenditure 
was in respect of penalties charged. These penalties are charged whenever a department is paying late for goods and services rendered, for instance. Uh, and in, in 6%, departments did not provide the uh, explanation um, or description of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Then 21% were in respect of uh, non-compliance with procedures, irregular payments, negligence relating to cell phone, cell phones and laptops, uh, um, a cancellation of events and issues relating to catering. So there is still much that needs to be done in departments. I know a National Treasury hosts a training a, a sessions from time to time on how these things should be managed. Um, but it looks like the, the picture is not improving. The status of the 1,081 uh, cases, here it is. It shows that uh, in 277 cases, disciplinary actions were instituted. There were no disciplinary actions in 55 cases. Um, and um, no disciplinary or no, not applicable meaning those people were after investigation um, they were cleared that no they cannot be charged but in 628 cases no disciplinary cases uh, have been in, uh, instituted in 37 they are still pending and in 84 departments did not indicate um, the status of the cases Now here we are just indicating the, the, the components uh, we have already alluded to. The, the discipline that is meted against members of the SMS. Here we say of the 557 that were discharged, we are just uh, reiterating that point. Uh, on four members belonged to the SMS group. But when you look at that uh, consequence management uh, um, uh, slides that we shared, you would note that SMS members are the ones mostly implicated in irregular, uh, unauthorized and wasteful expenditure. Ms. Demenas, particularly in respect to irregular expenditure uh, relates to supply chain, uh, involve members of the SMS because they sign off on, on, on all these processes that must take place in that area. Here we share with the members observations. The number of completed, not completed disciplinary proceedings in respect of financial misconduct reported by departments is far from what is actually happening in departments. Um, when you look at this high amount of value that is involved, you look at only 530 cases completed. You look at the billions we have showed and the people completed disciplinary action and recoveries, you will see that there is disparity um, um, of, of, of the transgressions as compared to the action that is taken. We say this becomes obvious through the monitoring of consequence management, which we have shared with the honorable members. And we are saying there is a high number of unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. I've already alluded to this slide, uh, Chairperson. And we say reports on financial misconduct submitted by departments to the PSC appear 
to merely ensure compliance with requirements stipulated in the PFMA. Because when we look at what is in the annual reports and compare it with what we have, has been reported to us, um, the picture is very concerning. And the period with which investigations uh, are, are, are completed, it's also worrying because it takes from year to year. Uh, meanwhile, it should be completed within 30 days a period as pre prescribed in paragraph 28 of the National Treasury Irregular Expenditure Framework. Um, the lack of departments implementing consequence management timelessly against the perpetrators will worsen the already bloated cases and also amount will amount to unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. So the because once action is not taken and there is lack last year to what uh, that action, swift action that must be taken. Officials will see that, oh, I can get away with it. Uh, it takes four or five years to conclude a case. Um, then they start to take chances around those, but we need swift action. Accounting officers of departments should ensure that effective and appropriate disciplinary action is instituted. And that is why when accounting officers appear before this August committee, uh, honorable chair, they must be able to, 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 to explain and expantiate on measures they put in place to mitigate against this sketch of rising uh, 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 irregular expenditure and financial misconduct cases. And we request as PSC that departments should provide accurate information when they report so that we, we can analyze it and zoom into where the problem is and propose uh, uh, measures, interventions to, to, to even to departments to say, implement this framework in the following fashion. Uh, because commissioners interact with um, EAs from time to time and ourselves when we conduct um, awareness raising in departments. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm at the end of my presentation. I need to thank you, honorable chair and honorable members. Thank you very much. Yeah, Chairperson. <clears throat> Chairperson, thank you very much. And thank you, DDG, for the uh, representation. Uh, what I need to emphasize in summary is that uh, the Commission is seriously concerned that it appears accounting officers and executive authorities of departments are not taking uh, financial misconduct seriously because of a number of uh, things. One, that the amounts involved are huge, and yet the recovery is very small or insignificant generally. Secondly, unauthorized expenditure, irregular expenditure, wasteful expenditure is, is going up whilst officials charged for all those uh, UIFW UI expenditures are uh, 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 small. And then senior managers, SMS members, who are supposed to be custodians or stewards of the resources in terms of PFMA, uh, some of them are found on the wrong side of the PFMA in this regard. So that is of serious concern because they are the people who are supposed to ensure that the resources are looked after uh, uh, properly. And then cases of uh, uh, unauthorized 
irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure are rising. Because if you look at the amount of money involved, for example, of irregular expenditure, it's about 127 uh, billion. Imagine what that amount of money could do if ever it, 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 uh, it's being uh, used uh, wrongly. It could be uh, the, 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 uh, uh, that money could be used for other uh, activities such as NESFAS, uh, roads, uh, sanitation, uh, police stations. So this is uh, uh, something that needs to be looked at uh, seriously. And then finally, uh, uh, when it comes to amount of money that may not be recovered, I think it should be understood uh, uh, in context. For example, if we say uh, uh, a building is procured for 400 million uh, without following uh, tender procedures, uh, uh, and then when you follow tender procedures, you may find that the same building could have been bought for 220 million, meaning that the department would have been overcharged 420 million. And then if you look at what 120 million can do, it's a lot. So I think in summary, that's uh, what the report uh, is talking about. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Sloane. Uh, I want to apologize to the Deputy Minister Sway. I did not acknowledge your presence uh, in the meeting today. Let me officially do that. Uh, welcome to the minister uh, to the uh, portfolio committee meeting, Honorable Deputy Minister. I see there are a number of hands here. Uh, let me go back to my uh, Honorable Ndoli, followed by Honorable McGlua, Honorable Komani, Honorable Gondwe, Honorable Lesoma, Honorable Tenekun, in that order. Honorable Ndoli. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, we welcome the presentation by the Public Service Commission. And we really commend the, the Public Service Commission for their honesty to, to, to reveal every wrongdoings. But Chair and the meeting, I've got a serious uh, problem. I've got a serious uh, concern. Chair, if, if it says, the presentation says, more irregular, fruitless, wasteful expenditure are going up. I, I, I think we've got the elephant in the house. If the presentation says um, there were no disciplinary action, if the presentation says people were cleared, that poses a serious problem to me. Chair, we are speaking of the taxpayers' money here. Um, now, what, what are the initial charges? If the, initi if the initial charges are saying they've conducted crime, where did uh, we involve uh, law enforcement agencies here? It's still going to go up. As, as he was saying, it's going up. It's still going to go up because everyone is getting away with it. 
people resigning how can a person resign after being charged because if you are, you are, you are being charged you can resign well and good but you are not going to get your pension fund no processes of your finances up until everything is finalized and for me chair and the meeting we can we can talk on this day in and day out if there is no one fired there is no one uh, um arrested what, what 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 is correctional services saying are they full there are so many people doing wrong things here why are, 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 are they not jailed? We, do, do, don't we have policies that are talking to these things as crime? If we don't uh, have policies, when are we going to formulate those policies? No if we are going to be told that uh, there were no money recovered because uh, uh, the, 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 the service was provided, provided by who? Provided by who? And, 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 and the, the how part? We are not, the church is not saying was the, pro, uh, was the service provided. The church is talking about the wrongdoings. If something wrong has been done within the department, what is the, 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 the what should be the outcome there? Why are we still having the internal investigation for what? People can do wrong do, uh, do, uh, things within the department and you find uh, the very same department investigating them. When are we going to involve the law enforcement and agencies? No one, there is no report that says so many were fired. Why are people not fired? Because they've done wrong. Um, um, there is no report that says so many are in jail. Why are we not arresting people here? Billions and billions, we are talking billions and billions. When people don't have roads, when people don't have bridges, when people don't have uh, uh, houses, etc. Eh? And people are, 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 are playing with uh, tax men, uh, tax uh, payers money. Chair, the sophistication that is being uh, applied by departments in this regard, it worries me. It worries me. That means if we, we continue doing things like this, uh, we'll be always getting such um, um, a report, clumsy reports, bad reports, and, and uh, that will go on and on and on. For me, one thing, what does the policy say? You've done one, you've done two. What does the policy say? If there is no policy, strong policy, that is talking to that, that means we don't have government. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable McClure. Thank you, Chairperson. I, I just want to add with the Honorable Member, you know, during my engagement, uh, previously with the Public Service uh, Commission, there were numerous complaints that they can't bite, they don't have teeth. I even at the time called them a toothless dog. Now, it's now enacted by Kate that they themselves has gone to court and make an open a, a case against those individuals. Uh, secondly to that, it is reported, Chair, and thank you for the report for the PSC. It is also reported that uh, the Northwest Province 
fails to submit and 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 it's the education department is the health department and to no surprise even if we can be provided with the reasons and also and if there is no action being taken against them i would like to propose chair that this committee summons those accounting officials to this meeting to come and report respond to to, to to this report and i see even the the state security agency as well according to the report and we need the reasons thereof as well and then Chairperson in the Northwest province where the HOD of the public works who has been paid is suspended for two years. I also would like the committee to be submitted with the status of that for two years under suspension, still getting paid, HOD of public works. And the other thing is I would also like to propose that the uh, P PSC submit and provide us with a breakdown of public and that break, the breakdown if possible per province and also a provincial breakdown on the action taken by the respective departments. Another thing is also the engagement and those who are doing uh, a breakdown of officials that did not declare their interests uh, uh, and as well as whether there has been action taken against them. Uh, the, another thing, uh, lastly, Chairperson, is that uh, the, the Public Service Commission uh, uh, at some point uh, submit a report on the newly appointed HOD of the Department of Social Development uh, in the Northwest province, whom the PSC uh, report itself as indicated in 2019, it was found uh, 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 that the, the person involved does not have the qualifications and only have a matric. When he was in the office of the former minister, I see she's also in the meeting, uh, a fate in Tambu. So whom today the department in the Northwest has hired. Uh, he's been hired with an, uh, and, 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 and this position you, you know, warrants an NQF8 position and, and the Northwest uh, uh, Department claim that, 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 that he is qualified. I, I would like us also to get a report on that issue. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Can I invite Honorable Komani? Thank you very much, Chair. You know, when you get this report, you really become so emotional. Uh, Chair, uh, we have got the PSC, which to me, I don't as of now want to say they are toothless. But Chair, we've got departments that does not comply with the completion of the dis disciplinary proceedings. And this is very worrisome. And we, we, we would also want to know what has been done because this shows that there's no will to conclude this process. And for the reason better known to them. And I, I, I'm tempted to say it, it, it depends on where you are, who you know, and then you'll uh, easily get off the hook. Uh, Chair, uh, one would as well ask us to say, why is there gross negligence and abuse of public money is not regarded as, 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 as criminal offenses. Because this is not our money that people are speaking about and that people are, 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 are wasting. Che, I would just take them here and there because, you know, I, I've got so much, but I'm, and I'm very emotional about this, but I'm trying to contain myself. Because Che, in slide uh, number 31, uh, I would want to pose this question to the PSC to say, are they comfortable with one, with one case stating that they are strengthening, uh, that the department is saying they are, they are strengthening their policies? If they, are, they were not comfortable with the, with, with the reporting from the department, what is it that they are doing? Because 
we cannot have policies and everything and yet one co- uh, performs misconduct and only to be reported that the department is strengthening the policies. What has been done to that mis- misconduct? Chair, and we, we, we see here we've got around 127 billion of irregular expenditures, yet people are cleared. And there are no action at all in many instances from the department. Most of them are going to supply chain non-compliance. What are the consequence uh, management in light of what is being encountered? Because uh, the, 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 the commission is clearly st- uh, is showing us as to where the misconduct has been uh, an irregular expenditure has occurred from. And, and, and yet there, there, there are little, if not if nothing, that is being reported in terms of consequent management. What is it that we, we must say about uh, all these reporting, Chair? And Chair, uh, what really is the intervention of the PSC in this regard? Chairperson, uh, the section for financial misconduct, uh, the sanctions for financial misconduct are very minor. Particularly, uh, 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 if we compare them to the offenses commit, uh, committed. And these commit, uh, uh, offenses that are committed are committed by the members of the SMS. Is this because the, 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 the misconduct is, is, is committed by the, senior mem- uh, by the senior members? And the very same senior members, Chair, they, they sanction, they, they, they impose harsher sanctions to their lower levels. But then it comes to them. Is it because they are holding positions? Is it because they are connected? We cannot, we, we, we don't know because we see here in many instances in the department, those that are of lower levels, that their sanctions would be harsher. While they would, you would even not understand what led to that sanction. But here we are seated with the billions of, 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 of friends uh, due to irregular and, 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 and expenditure with the people whom we, we, we have entrusted in senior positions. Yet the sanction there is very minimal. What is happening? Who's fully who there? Chair, uh, it is also worrying because, uh, Chair, there are still not members of the SMS. As I said, those, that, those sanctions that are imposed are, are very minimal. There are still a huge number of these members who are not held accountable. And Chair, we should record that as long as we held this protocol, this is an, uh, 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 it at the same time enables the very same perpetrators to resign and to go off the hook with the monies of the taxpayers. And we are seated here, we are getting reports, but getting a report that, is, that has got nothing tangible to hold or, or to write home about. It's, 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 it's so, it's, it's like we are sitting here as a department, I mean, as, as the committee to be receiving reports that we can, we can just interrogate that there's nothing that we can do. So I, I'm, I'm not sure as to whether I would say a public service commission is toothless. I'm not sure as to whether where I'm seated here, I'm saying I am failing in my duties as the member of this committee to make it possible for the, for, 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 for the people out there to say at least, at, because we know for a fact money has been spent, irregular expenditure has happened. What is it that I am doing as a member of, of this committee to keep those accountable? Chair, uh, uh, this is very worrying, sir. Chair, on slide 13, in the case where officials are, dis- uh, are discharged in terms of sanctions imposed to them, what happens to the monies involved in, their, in, in those misconduct, Chairperson? Because, yes, you, you <laughs> as I said, Chair, maybe it's a matter of who you know, how you, how, 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 how you play your cards. It, it is evident here because Many officials are, are, are doing wrong, and they would then be uh, they would then be discharged. Yet the money is been uh, money is uh, we have lost money, and there has been misconduct. 
to that effect. And chair, um, in social development, PSC, through chair, there are officials who paid monies. Even there, even if there were no records of misconduct against them. Yet in some other departments, light sanctions such as final written warning are imposed to the ones that have been proven to be guilty. Why is fairness in this regard? And there, what is the role? What is the intervention of the PSC? Chair, you know, uh, much as I'm very emotional, but uh, this thing of Northwest, Chairperson, maybe it, do, it hurts most where you know it better. I'm from Northwest Chair in the committee and the presenters, PSC. You know, we cannot be sitting expecting reports from departments and from the provinces where we are sitting with a province like Northwest where the, even in the office of the premier, they fail to, 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 to submit the, 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 the non-compliance report in time. What is happening? Where in a, in a province where we have got an HOD who have been receiving money, who have been earning in a, a day in and day out for two years, and the, 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 the disciplinary hearing is not even being con concluded. And it's worrying when we look at the Department of Health in the Northwest. It, and those are some of the departments that are non-compliant. Those are some of the departments that have not even submitted their reports. I, 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 I want to echo the same sentiments to say, I think we as the committee must then start to say, we need accountability. You know, you know, you know, Chair, when I'm, I, I'm, I'm about to wrap up, Chair, uh, uh, there was one in, uh, 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 one time when, when we, 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 we were clapping hands, when we had the commissioner, the, 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 the current commissioner of PSC, he had such a good plan. He had such uh, uh, recommendations. The time is now for him to execute the time is now for us to regain the, 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 the confidence of the people who voted for us out there to say we are not going to allow the taxpayers' money to be spent as and now, willy nilly, as and how people want it to be spent. And yet there, there's no accountability. And yet they all, all, always go off the hook to say they are, be, are being discharged, they have resigned, little is being done, uh, they are not uh, uh, disciplinary. Uh, 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 Proceedings uh, uh, conducted against them. Chair, lastly, uh, to the uh, 4.4 million that was regarded as no loss to state. Chair, I think it is time where the, where the department don't need uh, to mislead either the committee or anybody. Uh, there was misconduct. It does not matter now because they, 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 they find out that there is a misconduct, like Elder Alunduli has said. Now they want to redirect us because of, of not wanting to hold people accountable. They would then say, no, in light of that, there was no loss to the state, then there's, uh, it cannot be that. We must hold people accountable. And it cannot be correct for us to succumb to the statement that there was no loss to the state by virtue of that no loss to the state, it was effected on the basis of wrongdoing. So we, we, we must not condone that. We must as well not, uh, 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 not, not clap hands when uh, it is reported that there was an application for condonation from the department because there was no loss or, or of money to the state. Thank you very much, Chair, for now. Let me pause there. Honorable Usoma, come in. Um, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, and uh, uh, appreciation of the, the report that has been presented by uh, Public Service Commission through Commissioner Sloan. Uh, I'm just, uh, I want not to be like Honorable Gomani to be 
holding myself being emotional, but I, I would like to say Jay, we have been surprised, shocked at all times when we get such reports or presentations. For me, I want to go back to our memory to say that in September 2020, we received the same report. We asked for the details and uh, we agree that there are bodies that we need to invite. I'm saying probably we must also track ourselves whether we, do we implement all the decisions that we would have taken and promise ourselves. Uh, but also at the same day, uh, day, we invited also public administration, public service and administration. And they also took us to, through the presentation of how illegally it is for government uh, for government uh, uh, officials doing business with themselves as it were. And they even further said that they've set up a unit that will support government departments and provinces to ensure that disciplinary processes are, are speeded up. And I'm sure now it's almost three months or so. Probably is it not the right time not to get the experiences that they get? They've, they, 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 they've experienced in terms of assisting provinces or the provinces, are they extending a hand for assistance or what? That's one. Two, Chair, probably also, uh, which is quite uh, unfortunately that I have to say that, we, we, we don't have any tools or a capacity to measure whether principal committees that report these departments and uh, reports to they've got the prerequisite expected expertise also to do their financial oversight as it were. Probably what I'm raising here, probably those are the things I'm suggesting now, I'm making a concrete suggestion, Chair. That pal parliament in terms of support services, they need to tell us what support they can give us so that also when we engage with departments, we ask the right questions and the right uh, uh, decisions that we make. I know that we've got research uh, support and also content advisor, but I think it's more that we need to do because we, sometime uh, late 2019, just immediately after our establishment, we agree, we had a common agreement that we'll make sure that there are lesser departments that appear before SCOPA because our work, it's more or less the same as COPA. It's just that we, we deal with current issues across all government departments. We are such a powerful committee. But I think we are also not exercising our powers in terms of our mandate, informed by the departments that we oversight over. However, uh, Honorable Chair, I would say that Public Service Co Commission also, I, I think for me, I, I've started to appreciate that they are like AG. What they say, they can't modify it. They can't sugarcoat it. It's what it is, what it is. But also what is important, Chair, is to say they are informed by their powers in chapter 10, section 196, sub 4, B, D, and E. E is very critical for me. That empowers us after we know and shocked and being angry on their report, we call the executive, responsible executive authority to come before us. And I've seen and observed in some instances when we have done that, there is a little bit shift and movement. And then for us, it's a question of being consistent and we follow that department very through or that it is very through. It is of course, Chair, for me, that is unfortunate if we have to attend to these bodies. That one, we agree, Chair, that if cases that don't see the light of the day, which also is one of the things that is pending for this committee, we promise ourselves that we will invite SAPS, which they didn't come when we were having a presentation with Public Service Commission. We invite SIU, invite Hawks, invite SAPS, so that they can tell us such cases of mal financial maladministration, what makes them not to see the, 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 the day in court? Because there is something that is going very wrong there. Three, Chen. Also to have a meeting with the, uh, the, 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 the department that uh, 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 um, military reports to, not, not the portfolio committee, the department, to say 
and I have a better understanding of those uh, cases that are finalized and concluded in the before the military court. What is relationship to the normal mainstream court, as it were? I will tell you the money and the decisions that they take. That it's what is allocated by us through budget votes. So they must also tell us what they have done to that responsible general or whatever it is in terms of making sure that the money that has been mismanaged, it comes back so that we've got a better understanding. We know how they work, but they must give us an appreciation in this space. Fourthly, Chair, after we have invited all these departments, we invite DPME and COCTA to borrow lessons because you remember also, we agreed that we're going to invite DPME jointly with COCTA so that we can borrow and have confidence in value add on the section invoking of section 100 in some provinces uh, and also uh, section 138 and 9 of the constitution that if it doesn't add value it makes the situation worse where can we assist them as this committee chair so i've made it three clear recommendations so that also we are seeing that we are taking this issue very seriously. We are angry, we are exhausted, we are surprised, we are shocked, we are everything, but they must come in account. Let's use this opportunity of the recess and call all of them. When it needs that we need to sit the whole week, let it be. Thank you very much, Chair. I will now invite Honorable Kondwe. Honorable Chairperson, I'm also, um, at a loss for is Hakina Mahoko Tota, Kimagetsi, 127 billion for a regular expenditure, 6 billion for unauthorized expenditure, 2 billion for fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Ohawile, Ohawile, Honorable Konda. Can you unmute Honorable Gondwe? We lost you, Honorable Gondwe. If I can make a proposal, probably can they take her out so that she can rejoin the meeting. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm they, they have yeah, taken her out now. Renale, my okay. uh, I'm still shedding, so, but I'm back, it's fine. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go to the present. Yeah, I'm going to go to the So, public, the Public Service Commission um, correctly states that we need to liberate the public service of unethical employees. But this has to happen now, not tomorrow or any other day. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves, you know, our coffers completely depleted. Um, and I'm just, and I need to know from the Public Service Commission, how do we ensure that departments met out harsher sentences in this regard or, or sanctions um, rather, especially where the nature of the financial uh, misconduct involves huge amounts of money? Um, I know that you indicate that um, 530 of the completed disciplinary proceedings. Um, in 392 of these um, proceedings, um, public service employees were, were found guilty. And this shows that departments are implementing the relevant codes and procedures. But implementation is not enough. We need more than just implementation of these disciplinary um, codes and procedures. And we need decisive action um, to be taken against the implicated uh, public service employees because financial misconduct, whether it's fruitless and it's wasteful expenditure or you know, the abuse of, of misappropriation or abuse of government uh, funds, it's really costing us dearly. And then I wanna ask a question around um, the, the four non-compliant departments that they mentioned at the beginning of, of the presentation, namely the SSA and the Northwest Departments of Health, Education and the Office of the Premier. So, you know, uh, Rasselwani touched on the fact that they engaged the legislature around, you know, these three uh, Northwest uh, departments. And I wanted to find out what was the response from the legislature in this regard? And what of the SSA? Because I'm picking up on a trend. Yeah, yeah, SSA. 
the last time we met, uh, you know, the Public Service uh, Commission, we interacted early this year. You indicated, Jorge, they had not, you know, their SMS members had not even submitted their, their financial disclosure forms. So there's a trend here. Yeah, the SSA not to, you know, to comply with, this is the Public Finance Management Act and the Treasury regulations. They're basically flouting the law. And you indicated the last time around the, you know, the, their failure to submit the public disclosure forms, court, they argued that they were under the impression that they're excluded from this and because the nature of, of, of their job was so clandestine and so secretive. But we then pointed out, or no, financial disclosures uh, pertain to the person and not necessarily the entity that they work for. So I'm um, picking up a trend here that we really need to nip in the bud and address. And you also indicated Hore, you approached the IGI around this issue and the IGI confirmed Hore, they were obligated. Um, I don't think that any government department should be above the law irrespective of the kind of work that they do. Now, with regard to the Department of Social Development, you indicate in the presentation that they reported that seven, uh, you know, the 17 uh, completed disciplinary uh, proceedings, um, um, they, they, they indicated in, with regards to those proceedings that the implicated employees were guilty, but they chose not to impose an, any sanction because the concerned expenditure was recovered. How does that happen? The point is not whether or not the money can be recovered. The point is that there is financial misconduct. There is misconduct in this instance that it must be dealt with. So I wanted to find out for what was your response when they said this? Didn't you make them aware for the fact that it's about the act? It's, it's in the principle, in the fact that there's financial misconduct and it has to be dealt with. Whether or not um, you know, the money can be recovered and, the, and, and that, that doesn't take away from the fact that there's been an act of financial misconduct in this instance. And then I'm, I'm also worried about the fact that no criminal action has been taken by government departments for financial misconduct involving criminal activity such as corruption, fraud, and theft. That is criminal activity. Um, it, it, I, I, it goes even before beyond financial misconduct. It is, it is criminal. It is corruption. It is fraud and, 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 and theft, and it has to be dealt with. And I think that that is where you need to bring in law enforcement agencies to, to remind these departments that now we're in, in completely different terrain in that sense. Now, with regards to the amount of money involved in completed disciplinary proceedings uh, on financial misconduct, this is 516 million for the 2018-2019 uh, financial year. And I'm worried that Time and again, it's provincial departments that account for the majority of this, the, the, you know, of, of the money that is either, you know, used in, 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 a, in, a, in a wasteful way um, or, you know, in a way that, that really constitutes financial misconduct. And you indicate that the Eastern Cape Provincial Department accounts for 404 million of this amount. And, I'm just not entirely sure how you know we can we can continue you know along that trajectory. It's it's really crippling us financially. And then you you also indicate that a total of 592 disciplinary proceedings were reported as not completed, and 282 of these reside with the Department of Defense. And I think Honorable Lesoma touched on this because I also thought that this could be attributed to the fact that you know. Um, the defense force is, is, is subjected to a military orientated system of discipline. And we really also need to, 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 you know, to look into this and, and nip it in the, in the bud um, because it's, 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 it's affecting, you know, the, 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 the disciplinary proceedings being, you know, uh, um, uh, conducted uh, properly in this instance. And now going to um, the, the, the the annual reports of national and provincial departments reflecting that 127 billion in respect of uh, of irregular expenditure and once again we have provincial departments accounting for a majority of this amount accounting for 108 billion do public service employees in the you know that are involved in SCM do they do they understand what they are doing because something is terribly wrong here you know, we, we, we cannot incur 127 billion for irregular expenditure, 6 billion for unauthorized expenditure, 2 billion for fruitless and wasteful expenditure as a country. We cannot afford it. You know, our fiscus is, is, 
is under so much pressure and strain right now. And this is just adding to it. So I'm also Linda Haganama Huku Tota. I'm I'm actually shocked. Hore Ludin Tinya Nadia Dirahala and it seems Harkunodra Sepe. Kana Hakita or Matata Kai Kana Kutarikle Kai, but we really need to do something about it. And perhaps the you know the, the, the public service commission should also come forward and say, Hore, you know, these are the the, the, the powers we would like to see us having. We've done it with the Office of the Auditor General, and I'm sure in this instance, we can also help and give you teeth to actually bite and bite very well, because you need to bite, um, you know. Thank you very much. Honorable Tabekulu. Oh, I'm going to start. Uh, thank you, greetings to all our members. Um, to the PSC and the staff of the portfolio committee. Chairperson, a mouthful has been uh, uh, raised by the all members with regards to what uh, has been rep uh, reported by the PSC. Uh, I think I, I won't uh, go back to all what members have just raised, except to say, you know, Chairperson, uh, I was just wondering, the reason why sanctions were not uh, uh, um, the same for the lower uh, 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 um, level employees against the, the, the senior one. You know, this has prompted me to think and go back to what uh, one writer about the book, The Animal Farm, uh, mentioned that uh, some uh, uh, animals are more equal than other, others. So it shows some people are more equal than uh, others in the department, which is uh, 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 which leads to to one to sum up to say, you know, it's very sad to have listened to the presentation, uh, and the truth has been openly uh, presented to the portfolio committee, <clears throat> which assist uh, 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 um, our government which assist the government departments to actually make sure that uh, they somehow follow those involved, because these are criminal activities, Chairperson, if one may, may call it. You know, homelessness, unemployment, uh, mushrooming of informal settlements is not far from what uh, has been uh, presented. This fraud, uh, irregular Spanish has and, and, and the rest that has been uh, uh, presented to a person to the portfolio committee. If one looks at this, I, I really wonder those involved, how do they feel when they drive around seeing our people sleeping under the bridges, the homeless people, when they see um, our people in the informal settlements living in uh, and bearable conditions. Winter has come. You will you will see a lot on our on our TV, TVs and the reports by the radios of these informal circulars burning. People losing their ideas, their legal properties that, that they've managed to to, to collect and, and and save it in in, in those uh, uh, shacks, if I call, call it. Excuse me if uh, the, the the word shacks is is, is unpalatable to, to some of us. Chairperson. Um, as long as uh, people are found wanting, but uh, treated uh, 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 differently, it, it shows we are glorifying we are glorifying the, the, the theft. If I could call it, we are glorifying the theft that is happening in, in, in our government departments. I wish the relevant. Uh, uh, um, departments responsible for investigating and, and process uh, and, and, and uh, um, bring them before the courts of, 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 of laws in our country are aware of these. And these need to be now as it has been exposed to throw those people involved to account for what they, they are doing. You know, it's very painful, Chairperson, to see our people during the winter time or even in summer, to see our people living in the open, 
living in the open. You drive from parliament to uh, Acacia Park, you find people living uh, uh, under the guardrails, under the bridges. And they say those, 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 are, those are the houses they, they, they could live in. Tra cars driving uh, up and down, they can't receive a, a proper rest on those conditions. But billions and billions of uh, uh, sort of uh, misappropriated, I could call it. I really, Chairperson, feel the pain when uh, seeing those people out there suffering, when our, our employees, when the, the government employees live in poach houses, driving fancy cars, not having in their minds, in their in a, in a, in a, in a, in a what do you call it? Running off of, 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 of a proper way, but in their inner beliefs to see their own brothers and sisters sleeping on, in the open, eating from the dustbin. Imagine, we are now having a lot of our, our people in the dump sites who are now called scavengers because they go and retrieve what has been thrown in, in, in the, in the, in the refuse dump refusals areas just to get something to eat. And the whole of, our, of, 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 of the departments that have, have been mentioned here, they see no, no problem. They have no pain for those people. South Africa should not be like it is. We were hoping uh, the people who are employed on those positions are the people who are going to look after their brothers and sisters who have been uh, disadvantaged by uh, uh, the former uh, 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 government. Thank you, Chairperson. I now invite Honorable, uh, Honorable Mutsipe. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, people are resigning. Go away with their charges and nothing is happening. Very much concern about no recess, no arrest. That is not happening. Provinces and department failing to submit report, nothing is happening. How can people play around on countries' taxes as they wish and action not taken against them? When will criminal offenses are going to be considered seriously? And what must happen really in our country when senior members are the most people who do crimes than other lower people? When are we going to stand up and fight this crime and stop these senior officials not to do business and should not and should be zero and zero at all? The committee is tired to get same reports all the time. Actions must be taken. Honorable Chair, we are tired. Honorable Kabekule have just said, some are more equal than the others. It means it is true. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Malati. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, look, I don't wanna repeat what everyone has said, um, but I think there, there are two things that we, we can possibly do here. And one of those would require the assistance of the Public Service Commission, because my main worry is these individuals that are the lead actors in these transgressions, they don't leave the public service and disappear elsewhere. Some of these people get rehired in different spheres of government. And that is where my worry is. And I think it is high time that we now look at measures that can be put in place with regards to the re-employment prospects of people who have been found um, guilty, whether of you know, financial mismanagement or whatever the, the, the misappropriation of funds was in their previous positions, that we do not give them another ticket to remain or you know, continue with their careers in the public service, wherein we will remain at the risk of them, you know, replicating the behavior because they know very well that once, 
you 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 are investigated you can stay for as long as you want because you still get all your employment benefits and once the case approaches you know finality strategically people jump ship you know and then they have a cooling period of a few months and then we hear that they've been rehired in some municipality or in some provincial department or even some national government so i think that is where we have the opportunity in terms of the public service needs to work towards building a database of all these individuals, the nature of their cases, what was the sanction in each and every of these cases, and where are those individuals in the public service, particularly those individuals who then, you know, some of the monies cannot be recovered or the cases cannot be closed because they then leave so that we can begin to be able to track these individuals in the public service and take prior action. Because once they are in the public service system, we have an opportunity to put in the corrective measures and the punitive measures, regardless of whether they have left working for the Department of Health in the Northwest, and now they've moved to the Northern Cape, they are in another, in another capacity. And secondly, I think the input made by Honorable Lesuma was, was, was very constructive. And I think many of those uh, proposals that are in there will be very useful to us. Because, Chair, we, we have to rightfully, yes, lament um, the road. But we have also a bigger responsibility of ensuring that, given what we know and the information that is in front of us, how do we then plan in such a way that we can take out the roots of this rot and prevent this from recurring again. Because I, for one, I don't want to sit throughout my term where every financial year I get shocked and angry at the growing figure while these individuals re-emerge elsewhere and continue to get salaries at the expense of the taxpayer. Thanks very much. Thank you, uh, Honorable Malazi. I think what uh, Honorable Soma has suggested we, we, we have to take it as, as the committee. Maybe, I don't know if time will allow us now, but we have to convene COCTA, we have to convene these people who are, who are messing up in the public service. Having said that, uh, can I allow now the Public Service Commission to respond where they think they can respond? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable Lesoma uh, uh, summarized it very well. And maybe uh, uh, to emphasize, the role of the Public Service Commission is twofold here. One is to account to the Portfolio Committee about its work that is doing on day to day. Number two, is to provide information and which should be used by the portfolio committee and other portfolio committees in exercising oversight over the department. Because uh, departments are giving information on quarterly basis and on annual basis. The role of the commission is to give alternative information, oversight information, of what the department missed so that uh, uh, parliament can then hold the department uh, uh, accountable. And I think that's what uh, uh, Honorable Lesoma is saying that uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, departments, accounting officers and ministers and MECs should be called to come and account on this information that the Public Service Commission has raised. Uh, what Honorable Malazi indicated, uh, starting from the back, uh, about some of the people resigning and then find themselves in other uh, provinces or departments. There is a gap in law in the sense that once you have not been found guilty, it cannot be captured into the PESAL that you have found guilty. So if you resign, then you join another department. Where we can tighten the rules is to make sure that before any department take a, an official from any other department, in the verification, they must check 
whether there were no disciplinary hearing pending against that official. And if that can be tightened up, then officials will not run around in different provinces or in different uh, departments. And then what other honorable members were indicating? Basically, it is not the, uh, 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 the Public Service Commission that must arrest or uh, 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 hold uh, uh, those departments accountable. We need to identify the information where departments are lacking in accountability. We bring the information uh, uh, to parliament and then parliament uh, uh, follows through, through accountability and exercising uh, side. And yes, lamenting about this will not help. The power remains with parliament and parliament can call departments, EAs and accounting officers to account on this uh, uh, misdemeanors. I think the rest of the uh, responses which I've left, maybe the DTG can add to that. But the main point is that like SCOPA, uh, 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 Portfolio Committee on Public Service and Administration uh, uh, should see a Public Service Commission as an ally to deal with other departments. And then in the same way, as AG uh, sees the, uh, the, the SCOPA as an ally to deal with uh, departments. So I think that's what uh, needs to happen. So, so that we tighten our role as the commission with the portfolio committee to hold departments accountable. Uh, DDG, uh, you may take other responses. Thank you very much, uh, honorable chair and members of your committee. Um, I will start with uh, honorable Pebekulu's question, which was also um, highlighted by the other honorable members that it seems that there are different uh, treatment of wrongdoers. Um, uh, at lower levels, you see harsher sentences, uh, but uh, as it goes higher, you start to see final Latino warnings and so on. Um, we don't condone all of this as the uh, Public Service Commission. Um, we, but the, I just need to point out that the labor relations dispensation that is applicable um, sometimes allows people to bring in lawyers and, and that manifests itself at, at uh, SMS level, who firstly, they drag on the cases, but secondly, um, the cases results with, 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 with um, lesser sentences because of, of uh, maybe stronger representation, but wrong is wrong. Um, in our disciplinary frameworks, framework, we have all these sanctions listed as um, alternative, or they can also be uh, implemented um, uh, in a combined manner. Um, so as a democratic dispensation, when, when it comes to due process, it is left in the hands of that chairperson who's listening to the case now to meet an outcome, to decide on the case and even meet a, a sanction. However, we agree these issues are very serious. They are very depressing. Um, the, I'll repeat the one point of people resurfacing in other sectors. Uh, it is a bit prevalent in the sense that People who do wrongdoing in municipalities, they come now, you find them in still very important positions in national departments. Um, and in that regard, what is required is the investigation reports to follow them where they have gone so that disciplinary actions can be taken against them. Um, 
that is an interim measure. It needs to be supported by a system that will show that so and so has left the municipality as and he has resurfaced in a in a provincial department or a national department, for instance, as a CFO or as a head of supply chain uh, management. Uh, because the reality is the the risk will repeat itself. They, they will still commit what they committed in the in the in the uh, former or previous uh, employment. The DPSA is busy with the TAU. Uh, I've I've noticed that the appointments made there and people have started working. And with that unit up and running, most of the proposals from this committee, uh, for instance, the one of keeping a database of all transgressors in disciplinary matters, they are going to be possible with uh, the one presentation I've seen from, from, from uh, DPSA uh, TAO section. Um, we will, the proposal made by Honorable Lusoma uh, are very important. On our own, we'll start interacting with, uh, with, with subs, SIU Hawks, or, on these specific matters. We were interacting, but on other issues, um, we will now bring this to their attention and check if they form part of the work that they do or the investigations they are busy with. Um, there were questions asked about and from Honorable Kondwe, the non-compliant uh, institutions, the three departments, um, two departments, including the office of the premier in the Northwest. Uh, the, like Commissioner Sloan has said, we report a matter to the legislature for the legislature to hold the MEC and the HOD accountable, which is what we did. But in addition, the resident commissioner met with the respective MECs to say this non-compliant uh, attitude is not acceptable. Um, you need to comply with the law as it states. I can indicate with regard to the state security that the last time we were there, we raised the same issue, but after which there were engagements with state security um, uh, and, and the minister acknowledged that, look, my department was not submitting, at the time it was a financial disclosure framework, which they have now submitted. Uh, uh, we are going to indicate that, uh, we always indicate to them that they are, Financial misconduct is outstanding, but we will we will engage with her to do the similar approach here and with the financial um, disclosure framework. The I'm not the, the 404 million in the Eastern Cape. Um, the department explained that what was approved there, authorized, was 369 million rents, which is uh, paid to schools for whatever operations they are engaged with. However, this director um, exceeded that amount to, an, uh, to, to a tune of 404 million, which was declared irregular. Uh, she was uh, disciplined, not dismissed, however, but demoted to a lower rank uh, as one of the, when I say she, I'm referring to the, to the director who was uh, uh, implicated in dealing with that transaction. Um, Honorable Chairperson, I think I can leave it here uh maybe apologize for presenting this depressing uh, report but um, we are doing it to empower 
this committee, uh, uh, the, this August House, and um, to hold departments accountable. And once we do that, we are going to see improvement in trying to mitigate and bring this kind of misconduct down. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we, we shall have to follow that uh, suggestion by Honorable Soma so that we are seen as the committee playing our part. Uh, that suggestion, we will have to, to take it forward uh, in dealing with these matters. Um, we, we now have to deal with the minutes. Maskola, can you take us through the minutes? Uh, th th thanks, Chair. I, I am loading the minutes of the 12th. Can members see them? On my Chair. side, I can see them. Excellent, Chair. Uh, on these minutes of the 12th, Chair, we were just roughly um, adopting um, five uh, budget reports. I'll go to page one. Attendance register, page two. Uh, page two, and that's page three, chair, where we adopted minute, the previous minutes as well. That's the last page, chair. Minutes of the 12th. Thank you, chair. Yeah. Honorable chair. Hello. May, may we be excused when you deal with the minutes and all other things? Ah, Ugasi Pilar. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, can I see an indication from the committee members in terms of adopting the minutes or changing where you want to change? Duli, Honorable Duli, your hand is up. Chaperson, uh, thank you. Chaperson, I rise for the adoption of the of the minutes of the 12th of May. Thanks, Chair. Any further conduct to Honorable Duli? Any further conduct to Honorable Duli? I can hear you, Chair. Okay. Any second to Honorable Ntuli for the adoption of the minutes of the 12th? Uh, Honorable Chairperson. Okay. Okay. Honorable Mzipe. Um, seconding the adoption of the minutes. Thank yeah. you very much, uh, Honorable Mzipe. Was that the only set of minutes, uh, uh, Maskole? Uh, Chair, the one that I've just put up now is the minutes of the 13th May, Chair, which was the next okay. day. Okay. Um, I'm on page one, Chair. Uh, page one, which was just attendance register, chair, for members. Uh, I'm on page two as well, chair. Uh, page two, chair. That's page three, Jefferson. That's the last page, chair. Hey, can I get yes. a mover for the adoption of this set? Can I get a mover yeah. for the adoption of this set of the minutes? Chairman Duli. Duli, come in. Hey, I've tried our thing, Chair. Is it reflecting? First, let's check. You remember you oriented me what to do. Is, is my hand reflecting? 
I've been trying. <laughs> I, can, I can see it. I can see it on my side. I'm sure that Jefferson can see it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I've been trying. No, thank you, Jefferson. I rushed uh, for the adoption of the minutes of the 13th of May. Honorable Soma. Thank no, you, no, Honorable Chair. Okay. I move for this. I, I second the, the move the move for the adoption of the minutes by Honorable Dove. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Soma. Is there any other set of minutes outstanding, uh, Mastol? Yes, Shalo. This is the last one, Chair. Uh, the minutes of last week, the 26th of May. Oh, the 26th, yeah, I can see yes, that. Yes, uh, uh, Where we met uh, the provinces, Chair. I'm on page one. I'll try to move fast, fast and slow, Chair, to allow members to just grasp quickly. Uh, attendance register from the provinces. I'm on page three. I'm on page four, Chair. Uh, that's the last page, Chairperson. Thank you. Can I get a mover for the adoption of this set? I, I, I do, Honorable Soma. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I move for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of our discussions and resolutions. Thank you very much. Do any second to Honorable Nassom? I see Honorable Nassom's hand is up. Chairperson, I second the adoption of the minutes of the 26th, yes. Thank you, Honorable Ndoli. Was that the last set, uh, Mastoli? Yes, sir. Yeah, let me, let me now take this opportunity to thank all the members for their attendance to today's meeting. I will have some discussions with Honorable Lusoma in terms of that proposal she has made so that we must take that proposal forward in terms of addressing these problems in the Public Service Commission to assist the Public Service Commission. Having said that, thank you very much, Honorable Members. We have now come to the end of the meeting and the meeting stands adjourned. Long live the chair. Long live the chair. Long live.